Now let us start with the topic switch and looping statements. So coming to switch and looping statements, how exactly it can be executed. I have uh, with an example of program, program with program example has started this topic. Write a C++ program to input the number of units of electricity consumed in a house and calculate the final amount using nested if statement use the following data for calculation. So now let me start with your contouring statement that is nested if statement. So first I'm discussing about nested if. Next I'll go to the switch statement. So here units consumed less than 30 units, rupees 3.50 3 per unit. So this is how the rates are fixed here, greater than or equal to 30 and less than 50. This is the amount. And for this much of units comes, this is the amount. So let us start with the program. First, I have declared variable unit bill amount. So I'll ask the user to enter the number of units consumed. So the user enters that will be stored in the variable units. That I'm checking now that whatever user has entered, if it is less than 30, I know that if this condition is true, it will execute the next immediate statement. So if units is less than 30, bill amount will be equal to units into uh, rupees 3.50 per unit. That's why it should be multiplied by that amount, respective amount. Else. Again, else if else if statement nested else if statement it is if units is less than 50 again if th the second condition is true then this particular statement will be executed so that will be saved in bill amount next else if if it's failed if this is not if units is if it's not true second statement is also not true then it comes to third statement else if units less than 100 then again this will be this particular statement will be executed else by default the last statement will be executed so total units consumed will be stored in units it will print bill amount so the next the general form of if else if statement is if condition test condition one if this test condition two, statement one, else statement two, this will be continued. So to, if I want to use the same if else if statement to find the three numbers A, to find the greatest or largest of three numbers A, B, and C, then if A is greater than B, if A is greater than C, output A, else output C, Else, if B greater than C, output B. Else, output C. See, this is how exactly the program works. So, I have written the flowchart. If this condition true, if condition 1 is true, then it will go to check condition 2. If it falls, it will go to the condition 3. Again, condition 3 will be checked. True or false corresponding. If it is true, statement 3 will be executed. Otherwise, false statement 4. So condition 2 means, again, if statement is true, then statement 1 will be executed. So this based on the second condition, these two statements are executed. Based on this condition 3, these two statements are executed. This is how the flowchart will run. Next, coming to switch statement. C++ has built-in multiple branch selection statement that is switch. If there are more than two alternatives to be selected, multiple selection construct is used. The general form of switch statement is switch. There will be an expression. Then if this expression is true, it will be evaluated in switch. There will be an ex expression. If this expression should match with the case label one, case label 2 corresponding when this expression becomes equal to the any cases matches with any cases that particular case will be executed statement 1 if case 1 if it falls into case label 1 then statement 1 will be executed immediately it breaks from that 
it comes out from that switch. Loop. Otherwise, it will go to case label 2. Stay again, that particular statement will be executed and it will come out from that break. So it will break that whenever any if any one condition matches either from 1 to n, that corresponding statement will be executed. Then immediate break will be there from that statement and it will come out of the switch expression and it will execute next coming, forthcoming statements. If none of the cases are matched, then it will go to default. That particular default statement will be executed and it will break from them. So what is the flowchart for this is expression true, then label this first even this will be evaluated then that value if it is one then this statement if it is two it will go to this if it is n if it is otherwise it will go to default and it will go to the next forthcoming statements now i have used a switch to find the name of the day given the day number so switch day number if i give one then it is sunday it will execute this it will come out if I have given two, then this will be executed. Case two will be executed. So like the case three, case four, case five. None of this one to seven, if you have not given default, it will go to invalid. Other than if you are given seven, other than one to seven, then it will go to default and it will print invalid day number. So this first uh, statement is a bit peculiar within the C++ language because it uses labels instead of blocks. This forces us to put break statements after the group of statements that we want to execute for specific condition. Otherwise, the reminder statements, including those corresponding to other labels, also are executed until the end of the switch selective block or a break statement is reached. So now I uh, have written one program uh, here for this particular task, that is write a C++ program to input the marks of four subjects. Calculate the total percentage and output the result as either first class or second class or pass class or fail using switch statement. So it has given the range from here to here, first class, from here to here, second class, pass class, fail is how much it's given, range is given. Now, using switch statement, first I have to, uh, let me enter the first subject marks that I will store in corresponding variables. What is that? Subject first subject marks I'll store it in M1, second subject I'll store it in M2, third subject I'll store in M3, fourth subject I'll store in M4. Finally, I will add all the four subject marks and I'll put it in total. That is in the variable total. So total contains all the marks, sum of all the four subject marks. The total by 400 into 100 will give the percentage. So I'll print the percentage. If you want to, then that will be that percentage I'm converting into integer, the whole int of per divided by 10, that will be stored in choice. Now I'll put that choice where it falls. If the choice falls in case 10, 9, 8, 7, then it is first class. I mean, from here, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 means first class. If it falls to 5, if it is choice, the value of choice is 5, then it comes to second class. If the value of choice is 4, then it comes to pass class. Otherwise, it comes to, if any of these cases, above cases are matched, not matched, then it comes to fail. So it comes out of the loop. It will end the switch statement. So iterative constructs are looping. So what is this iterative constructs means? So these are the statements that are used repeatedly ex to execute a sequence of statements until some condition is satisfied or a given number of times. The process of repeated execution of a sequence of statements until some condition is satisfied is called as iteration or a repetition or a loop. 
So iterative statements are also called as repetitive statement or looping statements. There are three types of looping structures. One is while loop, second one is do while loop, third one is for loop. So what is this while loop? This is also called as pre-tested loop or pre-tested loop structure. This structure checks the condition at the beginning of the structure. The set of statements are executed again and again until the condition is true. When the condition becomes false, control is transferred out of the structure. So this is, you can see here, here the while loop is enter the while loop statement. You test the condition. If it is true, execute the statement. If it false, if it is false, then exit the while statement. So while condition is true, while if this condition is true, only then it will go and execute the statements. Otherwise, no, it will come out of the, it will never enter the while loop. So for example, I've declared, I have, I'm checking this. That's all. I want to print from 1 to 10. So from n is equal to 10, I have assigned y n is greater than 0. As long as this condition is true, keep on executing this. This is what the statement says. So see out n. So it prints, yes, n is greater than 0 because 10. It will print and n will be printed and it will be decremented by 1. Minus minus n means the value will be decremented by 1. So it becomes 9. Next, 9 is greater than 0. So as long as until 1, it comes keeps on printing. So it prints from 10 to 1 in reverse. This is how you can see that while loop. Now, now we find uh, using while statement to find the sum of all the digits of a number using while statement. So this is uh, how while uh, you're using here is I'll ask the user to enter the number. He will enter the number that will be stored in num. Now, if num is not equal to zero, I will first I'll calculate this num modulus 10 that will get reminder. That reminder will be added with the sum. The value of at the beginning value of sum is zero. That will be added with the reminder and that will be stored in sum. Again, that num is divided by 10. That will be this stored in num. So this num again will be checked. If it's not equal to zero, it keeps on doing it. So once it's equal to zero, it comes out of it. So sum of the digits is sum. So again, now I can go for to check the whether the given number is power of two or not. So first I'll ask the user to enter the number. And if that number is greater than 2, what I will do? Again, I will check if num modulus 2 is equal to 1, that is reminder is equal to 1, then I will make the flag 0. Okay, break. Num divided by 2, that will be stored in num. If that flag, whatever the value flag, okay, if that is true, else m is, I mean, it's power of 2. Otherwise, it's not power of 2. Do while statement. This is a post-tested loop structure. This structure checks the condition at the end of the structure. The set of statements are executed again and again until the condition is true. So when the condition becomes false, control is transferred out of the structure. So the general form of while structure is enter the do while statement, execute the statement. Okay, if it is See whether it is true or not. First, it will execute the statement. Then it will check, check the condition. If it is true, again, it will get back to the loop. Otherwise, it will exit from the loop. This is how the do while statement will work. So first, it will execute. Next, the condition will be checked. So here, when you use do while loop, at least if the condition is false, at least minimum once the statement will be executed, though condition is fake. A condition is not matched. So you are checking here one more program to check whether the given number is an Armstrong number or not using dual statement. So here, uh, this one, first I'll ask the three digit number, then I will read that number. That number I'll put it in temp, then I will write the same way like previous problem. I'll get the reminder. 
and also the sum will be added with remainder q and that will be stored in sum. Then uh, divide by 10, that will be saved in temp. Now I'll check for that value of temp. If temp is not the value of temp, I mean whatever the value is stored in temp is not equal to zero, then if the condition is true only then again it will go back. Otherwise it will exit from this. If, then it will check, it will execute the next statement. If sum is equal to num, then we will check for the sum, whichever the whatever the value the sum contains. If it is equal to num, it's an almost strong number. Otherwise, it's not almost strong number. So that's about the control statement switching and looping statements. For more such video, uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. For any queries, you can contact us with the mail ID. It's written here. Thank you.